look, for those of you who are worried about a slowdown in the economy, maybe the Fed gives us one, you might want to load up on some drug stocks here, including this, maybe some of the smaller, more speculative biotechs that you might like. Companies like Myocardia. It's a $2 billion biotech that's focused on treating the number one cause of death worldwide. It's cardiovascular disease. Myocardia has multiple products in the pipeline, but the biggest one is a phase three treatment for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a condition where part of your heart gets too thick and that interferes with its ability to pump blood. Now, the company had a research and development event today where they provided some new data on the most advanced pipeline candidates. The stock barely budged. That seems wrong to me. So could myocardia be worth picking up here or is the market maybe still too perilous for these kinds of stocks? Let's dig deeper with Tasso Giannakakos. He's the CEO of Myocardia. Myocardia to learn more about this company and its prospects. Mr. Giannakakos, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank Have you a seat. Me. Thanks for having me. Well, I think it's, uh, it, it's high time people realize what's the biggest killer people and how few companies are really trying to do something about it. So why don't you tell us how myocardia is stepping into the breach? Yeah, I think you, you mentioned it. The number one killer of all women and men worldwide. We're seeing it's one third of all people die from a cardiovascular disease. And then when you look at that, you think there'd be a ton of innovation happening in the world's number one global disease burden. And instead, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing fewer numbers of drugs getting approved over the last 18 years. So there's been a tremendous lack of innovation in this area. And that's why myocardia was born. Our entire purpose is to focus on deep disease expertise, which is the only way to get the breakthroughs here. And that's been challenging for people to do until now. Okay, so what we've known, and we've had all the companies on, we've had major companies like a Medtronic on, which talks about, they make devices. This is not a device that you're working on. No, we're actually, we're designing specific therapies we call with an approach that's called precision medicine. So we really research deeply the underlying biology, the cause of these diseases. This is something that has been challenging for cardiovascular medicine. We think about genetics, we think about imaging, we look at family history, and we design specific drugs that are aimed at the cause of the disease. So in so doing, we're hopeful that not only are we gonna improve symptoms, but we're gonna restore people to normal living and potentially even reverse the course of the disease, something that's never really been done before in cardiovascular medicine. Current standard of care is what? So these are 40 or 50 year old drugs that have been designed for other conditions. So the standard, of course, is pretty, pretty poor here. We're talking about beta blockers and things that really... You're talking about beta blockers Beta still? blockers, yeah. I mean, beta blockers, when I was born, they had beta blockers. Yeah, no, it's true. And so in some situations, they can provide some symptomatic support, but they're not really getting at the underlying cause. And we're seeing a lot of breakthroughs in other disease areas where transformative therapies that are applying this precision approach are coming, patients are benefiting. We've got to do this in cardiovascular disease, and we're leading the charge for that. Now, when people have heart failure, so to speak, is it too late for the things that you're designing? Not necessarily. So one of the biggest outcomes of these heritable cardiomyopathies is sudden death, um, AFib, and heart failure. So often, unfortunately, we're picking up diagnosis when patients are coming in and they're feeling short of breath and they're limited in their function. So these are exactly the patients that we're actually currently studying in our pivotal trial. We're studying symptomatic patients who have severe disease, New York Heart Association class two or three. So they're already down a path and we're looking to bring them back. Okay, so let's say there are people who are watching and say, you know what, I've got a bad diagnosis. My cardiologist is telling me this. Can you get this into a test, into a study? Well, we have studies underway right now. You can look at clinicaltrials.gov. We have a couple that are underway, two that are ongoing for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where the heart thickens, and one that's underway for dilated cardiomyopathy, which is the opposite. The heart is a little bit too weak, and it stretches, and the muscle walls are really thin. So Sanofi, which is a huge company, is choosing, uh, choosing myocardia to partner with. How did that come about? Yeah, so about six years ago or so, when, when the company was getting going, um, there was a lot of interest in the, the drug area and in big pharmaceutical companies to think about a way to get at this unmet medical need. We all recognize that the need is there, but historically they've been looking at very, very large clinical studies that cost a lot of money and take a lot of time and usually don't work out. So we came around with this fresh approach. They've had some experience with similar approaches in other disease areas, with Sanofi in particular with their Genzyme unit, which is looking at rare sure. disease. And, you know, and the leadership at that time was thoughtful enough to say, this is an area we want to invest deeply in, we want to partner with myocardia in. The science made sense, and now we're on three years into the collaboration. We're making a whole lot of progress in a very short period of time. Uh, one last thing that I always wanted to ask, because I think it's important, is, does the company need money? Because I always tell people, listen, if they need money, maybe they do an offering and they can get in on that one. Yeah, we're fortunate enough. We're well capitalized. We've got 
uh, over $400 million in the bank, which moves us into 2020, which is well past a number of value inflection points. We're essentially uh, releasing important clinical data about once every one or two quarters now. And so we're in good shape. It'll get us through the readout of our pivotal study in HCM, which is the second half of 2020. So we just got to keep going with great science and hopefully we'll be able to help some patients. Well, many of us, including my family, are cheering for you and hope that you have the breakthroughs that you're describing. That's Tasso Giannakakos, the CEO of Myocardia. I don't know, I've read through all the documents. It's, it's a pretty interesting company. Mad Money's back at the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.